Welcome to Workout Master. Uh, this is episode 10 and we're going to talk about uh, how to lose some body weight. That's Aaron and Ruben, by the way. He's always dropping <laughs> in on me that I forget. He forgot today. You see? Yeah, so the question is how do we lose body fat? We want to exactly. shed some pounds, we're going to trim our body, we're going to look more shapely. Obviously, usually the case is that we have to lose some extra pounds of body fat. So today we're going to put succinctly the points that we have to follow to achieve that task of losing body fat. Simple. Yeah, for years we pretty much practice this thing with each and every single one of our clients mm -hmm. who wants to lose weight. So this is a proven technique. Uh, and the only way you can actually lose weight is if you just follow this precisely. So the first thing that the clients got to do is they have to eat right according to their metabolic type. So you would want to refer to our metabolic typing episode, listen it all over again, and make sure that you're following precisely your metabolic type. That's, that's correct. I yeah. don't remember which episode it was, mm -hmm. but one thing we're gonna add, we want to lose weight in a healthy fashion, not in any way that's gonna actually be a detriment to our health. That's very important to point out. Exactly. There's basically two big strategies out in the market. One of them is the cutting down in calories, Starve you to death. which is a, a short-term strategy, doesn't work in the long term. Nope. And another one is excessive exercise, which is also doesn't work in the long term, right. only works in the short term. In my personal opinion, I think in that both of them, they're pretty destructive and they only lead you to make you unhealthy, sickly, and possible to cause, you know, to cause in the long run irreparable damage. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So the uh, first thing you gotta do, you gotta man follow metabolic typing. That's correct. Second thing? Uh, blood sugar control. This is key, guys. You don't understand how important this is. You have to make sure that your blood sugar levels, they are balanced throughout the day. You don't want the peaks or the valleys. You wanna maintain a sustained level of, of blood sugar that's gonna make you feel good. For that, what's very important is that we eat frequent enough so that the blood sugar is, remains at a steady, normal pace. Doesn't go high, doesn't go low. You want to maintain it almost normal. Obviously, it's going to fluctuate slightly. When you first eat, the blood sugar will rush through the system and actually it will, it will, it will spike, quote unquote, a little bit, but it will not have a major rise and then a drastic downfall. That's the one thing that you want to avoid. Exactly. So blood sugar control, very, very, very important. Please refer to episode three. This is Holistic Nutrition 101. We yes. talk a lot about this. Right. Number three, water is extremely important. You gotta drink a lot of water. Yes, many of the physiological functions that we have in our body, they're driven by water. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that is quite often a mistake that we make is that we mistake thirst for hunger. So quite often times, the body is very thirsty, but it triggers the same mechanism as being hungry. Exactly. So what we do in turn is that we consume more calories, more food, good or bad, it's still excess calories that your body is not capable to place in the right system at the right time. So one thing that you can definitely do is to take a glass of water or maybe even two mm -hmm. before you would want to eat. 10 to 15 minutes, that will be perfect. Yeah. It does many functions, you're absolutely right, Aaron. It actually is going to lubricate your gut. It's going to promote the release of digestive enzymes and bile into the stomach, so the food that's coming in is going to be better digested, better broken down for future assimilation and eventually, you know, elimination. Exactly. Right? Uh, number four, sleep. We had specifically one episode designed just for sleep. Yes. Refer to it, please, guys. Sleep as much as possible. It is very, very, very important. Yes. Realize that the phase of recuperation and restoration that the body has is always done in the nighttime. If that's when you sleep, of course, we certainly hope so. And we talk about the ideal hours is 10, 10, 30 p.m. to around 6, 6.30 a.m. the following day. Exactly. That's when you all the repair. That's when your body releases growth hormone. That's when your body actually maintains ample you know, time to rest and recuperate and restore and make sure that the body goes into a healthy direction. Sleep is very, very important. You look around, guys, look around. The people that don't sleep, they usually do not look healthy. The first thing you're gonna see is that their eyes, their face looks like sometimes mine does because I'm up to my eyeballs and work and I have to once in a while sacrifice some sleep to get a little extra work done. But I'm trying to, uh, to cut that problem. But you'll see that their faces begin to sag, they'll start looking awful. And that's 
the one thing. They don't call it beauty rest for no reason. It's for a very specific one. Is that it will actually make you look better. You can sleep yourself skinny. Literally. I want to steal that from you. Sleep yourself skinny. I can see a big article coming up in uh, Shape Magazine. All right. Um, other one very important is movement. So we are started as a trainers, turn uh, holistic health coaches. That's correct. Uh, so we we do love exercising. Yes. Uh, we see an abuse of exercise all over the place. And uh, we and see, misuse. And we see uh, underuse of exercise. Or misuse, absolutely. That's so correct. you would want to do something in between. Start moving. Start using your body. Be creative. If you don't have a gym, you don't really need a gym, you can start walking, it's soon we're going to start creating more uh, exercise uh, related stuff. Yep. There you can pick out exercises from here and there, but mm -hmm. for right now just move. And if you move a lot, sometimes it's good to go back and see if maybe you're moving too much. So if you're someone of a triathlete or anybody who lifts a lot of weights like daily without days off or you have two, three hour worth of working out, mm -hmm. a lot of times it could be an excessive amount compared to other things that you do. Yes, and brings me to another thing that eventually we're going to be putting out other episodes mm -hmm. about how cardiovascular exercise can help you or hinder you from making some changes physically. Uh, but he makes a, a strong point. A lot of people that are not prepared and not ready yet to take the step into training for major or highly competitive arenas, triathlon cyclism, uh, running, marathoning, short, uh, half marathons, you have to be very, very, very healthy, very fit to get to train for these specific sports. Why? Because they require a lot of cardiovascular exercise. And what happens is that, you know, the minute the body is not really accustomed, and, and this is, you know, between, you know, potential marks, it's going to change from person to person. You do a lot of cardiovascular exercise, your body is going to release a lot of cortisol. That's a, a hormone that it will make you take back steps as far as losing body fat, as far as feeling good, as far as keeping your body in, in check, because it's very, very destructive to the body. A little bit to make some major, uh, so small fluctuation in the body is good, but too much will actually will send you back steps. Basically, and stress creates inflammation. Inflammation creates a lot of problems. So a lot of times, the weight-related issues are inflammation related issues. Heck yeah, I mean I see it all the time. People say, you know, why well, I have this body fat and stuff like that. I says, you know, I look at it and I said, nah, I don't see a lot of body fat. But I see a hell of a lot of inflammation. And they look at you like, well, uh, exactly. They don't know why it is yet that you know that they have only a certain amount of layer of body fat, but underneath there everything is like pushing out from the inside out. That little is your, your organs, your glands, you know, actually bloated, inflamed. Water and, retention, another big one of uh, right. But it's not only you know between the skin water retention, it's actually water retention systemically, systemically. and, and that's, that's not good. All right, uh, another very, very important one. I usually recommend my clients to get off of this very specific foods. Anything that has gluten? Yes. So gluten is a kind of protein, mostly it's in the grains. So I would say don't eat any grains, exclude all the grains out of your diet. Number two, dairy, pasteurized dairy for sure, gotta go. Gotta go. Number three, soy products. Soy. 